the speed of how fast things are changing and how vendors are delivering solutions. And what's the dynamic there? Well, I'll give you an example. We took a customer from a JD Edwards AS400 environment to a Linux cloud environment in less than four weeks. And I abandoned a huge, you know, CapEx environment and went to a very on-demand environment. They didn't believe it. They didn't have um, the credibility, it's gonna happen. And we said, just go with it, because it is gonna happen. Um, yeah. My microphone is a little the adjustment here in the microphones because we got over sound of the, the, the big screen here, the Jumbotron. We have a, a, an advantage that we have done delivery and we have this kind of methodical. You t t talked about CC, not very you know, dynamic, but actually, when you execute, you have to do it with a method and bring this reassurance that we know how to do it. And we have done a lot of clouds ourselves to deliver. We, I, we have delivered nine clouds data centers, so we kind of have the cookbook of how to do it. So, so the, yeah. hold, hold on Dave, one more question if I get in there. So the, um, the founder of Puppet Labs, who was one of the guys who built Puppet, you know, famous open source uh, framework around configuration, et cetera, said uh, about the, the question, same question, he's like, People are talking about the future, and they're not paying attention to the present. That's right. And the present's really dynamic, you know, when I mean, you're joking about Hurricane Irene, but right now, what are the core things right now that need to be solved yeah. to make cloud truly industrial strength? Go ahead. I, I think that there are two type of uh, problem. One is really the entire, the entire licensing issue. And that's why people want to go OpenStack because not every software vendor has their act together. So when uh, one piece of your stack costs as much as your entire cloud for three years, people tend to, you know, not wanting to go they there. They tend to go, oh my God. Yeah, and, and, and they're going to, oh, so what can I do? And open source created a really good environment for them to go. So there is a, a little bit of a, uh, a challenge there, and that's why we as a service provider try to talk to the um, uh, software provider and say, give us um, service provider license so that we can mitigate that. That's Do they listen? Um, I would say some, uh, not everybody. I think that the- Let me guess. <laughs> Oracle. <laughs> we know. I, I, think, I think that that's that's one of them, and I think it's probably the most obvious one. And and the moment that we get everybody aligned, uh, we had very big breakthrough at SAP, and SAP um, understood, and that's a big issue of customer. That's why a lot of people does dev and test because it's a brand new workload, and they can pick their their licensing mechanisms. Yeah. And the other thing is a, is an execution. Everybody wants to talk about the next great thing of cloud, and I, I think we have to talk about the things we can do today in the short term so that we can bring value added and agility to the business. So that brings me to Dave. I got a question for you. Where is the action right now? We were talking a little bit about, as Sticky was just saying, there's a, you know, a lot of talk about the the future of cloud and the, the, the direction the cloud is going, and, and you had indicated to me that, that private cloud is where you guys are doing a, a lot of your business today. Yeah. So what do you mean by private cloud? What are you guys doing in that environment? Where's all the action there? Well, it all starts with the client uh, need to be risk averse. And so everyone's buying into the vision of cloud. You mentioned it earlier, it's about the future, it's exciting, it's sexy, but how do you get there? And it's a really, a, it's a crawl, walk, run process. So what private cloud is for us, it's very simply put, it's the ability to take the benefit of a public cloud built as a service into an on-prem environment, uh, rate card based, and, and to do it either in our data center or the client's data center behind their firewall. And so at the end of the day, a lot of these workloads that uh, clients want to move into a cloud service delivery model uh, are, are well suited to a private environment. Siki talked about test and dev, collab and mail. We're now starting to see a lot of client interest in taking some of the other tier two and three workloads that support a business process and, and move those in. And we're spending a lot of time and money on the application uh, services side, really industrializing services that will move onto this private cloud environment and allow a company to kind of test drive it 
and, and realize the benefit of it. So what makes that private cloud cloud? Is it I mean, doing chargebacks? Uh, is it just, uh, I mean, just really putting in virtualization? Can you talk a little bit about that? Go ahead, see. It, it is the ability to flex up and flex down. So today, a, a project, if it needs virtualized environment, they get it at their maximum peak. And they only use it some time. And it's very, very expensive, even if, if it's virtual, virtualized. But bringing the same cloud fabric and cloud methodology and economics to the private cloud makes the customer very efficient. Because the cost effectiveness is the ability to be able to maximize their resources for the need of the business at that time. So if a workload runs for eight hours, why should they have infrastructure 24 hours? In the other eight hours, they, another business can run uh, their business and, and then maximize the cost and the agility of, of the business. Going back to the private cloud, I'll give you an example. We have a large customer, a chemical company. They went all the way 365 Microsoft. And then they went, oops, we have probably a couple of thousand users that do research and development and the CIO office where we really can't have them on the public cloud. We can't, we cannot really have them outside the firewall. And, and they come back to us and say, can you create a red, a red zone of another email environment, still Microsoft, for all this things that cannot go outside that we need to protect. So, and that's when you get with an hybrid environment, but that's really the need of uh, private clouds. So you've been an entrepreneur in our last uh, interview. You shared your story about how you started a company, sold Dip Cloud, and so you know, we know you're a domain expert um, and sharing great knowledge, but you've been successful at CSC, and CSC has a reputation of, um, of, of servicing at a, at a high level of excellence. And, and some people right now are struggling right now to figure out what to do. Uh, in, in competitors and even the big companies we're seeing in the, in the news every day and this transformation. What was your secret of success? Um, and I know you listen to customers and all that stuff and you know that, that's all cool and all, but what particular, um, can you share your, your uh, secrets of success of why you guys have been so successful and, and the speed that you have been? I think that uh, CSC really accepted the fact that we needed to transition our culture and our offering to as a service economy. And they saw the cloud as a good um, growth path for our outsourcing. But the things that really work very well is that very rapidly we made a plan and executed on the plan and a strategy and we selected partners and we delivered solutions. In a kind of way, we are all about getting references and referenceability because in the world of cloud, the case study and who does it have the story to tell to the customer. If you talk a lot about it, but you don't have the story to tell, oh, don't do that, do that, that worked, that didn't work, you never get the credibility. So our, our goal was always to have a very fast path for our clouds and to execute, execute, and to get the right partner that they can work with us. And David has been instrumental to create our partnership and alliance program. Yeah, I, well I would just build on Siki's point. When you, you know, CSC is a 52 year old company. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of government focus. Really it helped invent the outsourcing industry. So I think a lot of folks are, are surprised that we would want to take yeah, a, leadership, so fast, right? a leadership role in, in, in really these emerging service areas which are highly disruptive to the core business. So our focus strictly, and that when you look at the business strategy of the company is sustaining the growth of the traditional services and, and then investing in the resources to go be a first mover, early mover, and capture a leadership position on the emerging side. And cloud is the future. So David, uh, you, you've dealt with, a lot, you manage yeah. the alliances, I noticed that was on your title, and obviously we're at VMworld, uh, VMware, um, they have an ecosystem, but you guys have seen the ecosystem play before. I mean, we can go back to client server, we all know the days and how that was, and, and Siki, you made the comment at Sapphire that we loved, which was the suits and the million dollar deals and the 18 to 36 month rollouts. Obviously, you made a comment that that's changed now, but how drastic has it really changed, and how has that changed the partnerships and the kinds of partnerships that you do? Well, you know, for us, it's all principle-based. You know, partnerships, irregardless of the, the industry, technology disruptions are you know, built on principles. And for us, common vision, common enemy is, is job one. 
Next thing is the, the whole notion around the shared vision, right, as far as strategy. And just as importantly to Siki's earlier point is when, when companies are threatened by a common enemy, you know, it causes you to get out of the box and think differently about the client. And, and it really starts with the client and, and working back in. So those principles are still front and center. It's just a lot of the players are new. And certainly our position in this ecosystem is, uh, is very new because of the, the opportunity we see with folks like VMware, EMC, Cisco. Yeah, and so, you know, to run your business, I can imagine, I mean, I, you know, I don't never work there, but I can imagine, you get a toolbox. You go to the toolbox and you use all the tools you can to help solve customers' problems. What technologies right now do you see that are what I would call locked in? These are good, they're rocking, they can still iterate and expand. And then, what are the emerging technologies on your radar that you're seeing that are going to be instrumental, that are vectoring into that kind of growth path and, yes. and success that you have? So, I think everything related to infrastructure as a service is kind of locked in. I mean, we run a, a vCloud director cloud and uh, we have multi-clusters uh, around the globe. Uh, this moving workloads that fly around, that doesn't really exist and customer really don't want it. They actually want to know where it is and where is the DR and what's the backup and, and everything. So we have these incredible images that things go in a cloud and then fly around. I mean, data privacy and things like uh, legislation won't allow us to do that. Uh, but in the infrastructure space, you very fast, 15 minutes, you can load a workload and you can run it and you can burst a, a maximum power or capacity. So that's pretty much done. I think that the evolutions that we have are very exciting on the past layer. The applications that we bring to, the brand new applications that we can bring to the, to the cloud, that we can build, and I am really excited about the future of how you connect the end user to the cloud and the tablets and what we call the window into the, into the cloud. The ability of an end user to use every type of uh, devices to interact with applications and workload that are in the cloud. I'm excited about that too because I, I don't have to install DLLs anymore on my, on my yeah. PC, right? But you know, the point you're making about uh, data flying around the cloud is, is very interesting. I mean, I got a new laptop several months ago. I had to back it up, back yeah. it up to the cloud, and it took a long time. And yeah. So I can't imagine corporations with a lot of data moving stuff around. So, so you're talking about a very pragmatic vision here. Yeah. Um, that that's what your customers are driving toward. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the services business. John touched on this. Uh, Silicon Angle actually recently launched a new publication called Services Angle. I don't know yeah. if you knew that, but uh, Alex Williams is out there. He's the editor. And um, the whole idea was that the cloud collision that's occurring between the traditional services business, guys like CSC and IBM and Accenture and, and HP, is colliding with this new you know, breed of, of clouds. Who's your competitor, Siki, in your cloud business? Is it Amazon? Is it, I mean, did everybody talk a little uh, bit about uh, that landscape and how it's changing? We compete with Amazon and Rockspace and Savis uh, when it is related to data center um, in data center business, so private cloud and public cloud in CSC data center. This is really the, the big dynamics. When we have a private cloud in the customer data center, then you have HP trying to get, get, get it a go. IBM is actually very tentative. I think that uh, uh, one thing that we were able to do and uh, with David and, and uh, our management overcome this fear of our cannibalizations. And really when you look at it, 12 months into it, is actually everything is growth. This brand new opportunity is bringing innovation to our customer. And I think IBM is still, is still there. And then there is a lot about people wanting to say, I am going to build you a roadmap on what you can do. And customers are kind of a little bit tired of roadmap. They just want to know, I need to save 30%, get me there, how fast you, you, you can get me there. David? No, I think you nailed it. All right, yep. okay. Well, coming up next, we're going to have EMC, VMware, but I have one final question for you. Um, 
there's emerging uh, conversations. We had Amar Awadala on, who's the co-founder of Cloudera, mm -hmm. and Cloudera is obviously pioneering Hadoop and big data. Um, yeah. Things like big data are changing the role of a sysadmin in a way how the, the DBA and the database side. So comment about the emerging tech in databases, NoSQL in particular, and big data, and how that's intersecting with you guys. Are you seeing that as kind of like a real provocative conversation, or are they, are they real conversations? Well, they're real conversation. I mean, Adoop as a service is one of the most requested uh, workload, especially in a private cloud. For big company like financial institution that they need to crunch data on their market data and maintain that type of visibility all the time, solutions uh, like that are very important and they are very low barrier to entry of cost. Database is the you know, we go back to the license thing. You know, that's why people want to go to Cassandra. Cassandra is a great database, different. You go away from SQL, you go to Object. Not everybody's that comfortable, but data is one of the biggest workload that we see for the cloud. Together with our high performance computing and the ability to combine them together to give analytics for a large corporations and the problem is that they do it today today but it's very inefficient you know they run um, a schedule for three hours and then all this stuff sits around and then they run another one for a couple of days and then it sits around and they have all this compute power that I said why don't you harvest and just give it to the rest of the corporation instead of going and buy refreshes over refreshes over refreshes. I was um, in Australia for two weeks and I spent a lot of time with mining company that do geological analysis. That's a lot of data. But they just have you know, mountains of server to just crunch the data. You know, um, at Strata this year in February, we we had a uh, we coined a phrase on the cube, which was "Big Data gives the cloud something to do." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. <laughs> okay, Siki, always a pleasure. You're great knowledge. You're dynamic. You've got an opinion. You're you're not afraid to share it. Um, right on the money. We love to have you on the cube, uh, David. Thanks for coming on as well. Sure. I appreciate the conversation.